boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's a little windy outside today. Look at these trees bending and swaying in the breeze. All over Southern California today, I've seen broken branches, fallen trees, blown over trash cans. Huh. It must be Wednesday. For me, wind is my arch enemy. I don't know if you know this about me, but I tend to make a lot of videos. I make them in the hot. I make them in the cold. I make them in the rain. I've even made them in hurricanes. But the most difficult thing to make a video in is the wind. If I'm out and about on a road trip or out in the middle of nowhere or something like that, I have one of these microphones with a little furry thing that sits on top of the camera and it pretty much cuts out most of the wind noise. But whenever I'm home in Southern California and I want to go say, especially to a theme park, using one of these, which are called shotgun microphones, is usually not allowed. Technically, I think sometimes they're allowed, but a lot of times if you have this sitting on top of your camera, people are like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing with that? Are you filming? All of a sudden they're worried you're with CNN or something, or TV, or you're making a movie. That looks a little too professional for YouTube. And of course, you know, without the wind microphone, the sound sounds like this. Hear that lovely noise? That's the sound of the camera with no microphone. So you can see why having that microphone is kind of necessary on a day like today. Well, my big plan for today was to head on down to a certain theme park that we all know and love because I heard that an ancient, extinct, former attraction from this theme park has actually returned. So. We'll see what we can do. We're back at Knott's Berry Farm. This is exciting stuff, man. It's not every day that an old attraction that was taken out of a theme park is put back. But that's exactly what's happening today. This is pretty exciting stuff. I mean, think about all those attractions like it's say Disneyland that have come and gone over the years. I mean, how many of them have ever returned to the park? I am pretty excited about this. <laughs> I love being back on the old farm. <gasps> Looks like not Knott's Berry Farm has already become Knott's Mary Farm. That's when the park, and especially Ghost Town in particular, gets taken over by Christmas. Ooh, candles. Good morning, handsome Brady. Whiskey Bill. Still smoking that pipe, huh? That's cool, that's cool. You ever thought about vaping? No? Okay. Look at all the little shops that have taken over Ghost Town. Oh, too soon. Old Betsy's got her poinsettias back. There's Christmas music playing and Christmas decorations for sale. I love Knott's Merry Farm. Look at all these knickknacks. Christmas trees and bows and bracelets. And more bows and beanies. Even baby bibs. Whoa, look at this. A Knott's Berry Farm Christmas tree. And even better, a Knott's Berry Farm Christmas train. I promised myself I wouldn't get too fixated on Knott's Berry Farm today, but look at all this stuff. Santa Claus looks different here. Now what I love about Knott's Berry Farm is that it's very different from other theme parks. In that Walter Knott specifically wanted this place to teach people about the American West. From the very beginning, history has been very important to Knott's Berry Farm. No matter how creepy a form that might take. You've got Ghost Town itself, which is partially constructed from old original buildings. Some of them are actually historic. Others are replicas of historic buildings. There's even a museum. Museum here. Full of old timey, old western stuff. Starting with the opening of Ghost Town in the 1940s, all the way up until Walter Knott's death, telling the history of the American West was a big priority at Knott's Berry Farm. Of course, ever since the Knott's family sold the place, they've uh, evolved to have some other priorities. And sadly, some of that original Knott's Berry Farm history has been lost along the way. And I'm not just talking about old rides. See, right here what you have are a whole bunch of boysenberry vines. Pretty cool, right? They've got a sign talking about Walter Knott hitting it big with the boysenberry, and then they have some actual boysenberry plants growing right back here on the farm. But did you know they used to have Walter Knott's actual berry stand right over here? Nowadays, there's a modern roller coaster over here, but once upon a time, Walter Knott's original the original berry stand was on display. To showcase how he made it from berry farmer to uh, entrepreneur. At some point, Knott's decided that they no longer needed to reference the Knott's history and it was sadly lost. I mean, it makes sense, right? Roller coasters bring in more money than old derelict berry stands. The thing is, is that Walter Knott really didn't care that much about money. Half the stuff that he bought for Ghost Town wasn't because he thought people would flock 
from miles around to see it. It was either because he wanted to tell a story about American history with it, or he just liked it. And case in point is Knott's Berry Farm's El Camino Real. Those of you not living in California probably won't know what the El Camino Real is. But the El Camino Real was the old Spanish road that connected Mexico to California. The road actually translates as the Royal Road or the King's Road. And it went all the way from old Mexico all the way up the coast of California to the Spanish missions. Back in the early half of the 20th century, El Camino Real was becoming a thing again. They were marking the old highway along the modern freeways. Usually with bell-shaped markers just like this one you see here. California was getting all stoked on its early Spanish colonial heritage. So of course, after building his very own old Western mining town, Walter not had to have his own El Camino Real. And so just across from Ghost Town, past Calico Square, just past the old train station, Walter not got his wish. Check this out right over here. From the 1950s all the way up until the 1980s when Walter not passed away, maybe even into the 90s when the family sold the farm, there was a set of old adobe brick arches right here that marked the entrance to Walter Knott's very own El Camino Real. The arches are gone now, but if you look back here along the train loading area, you can still see a little remnant of what the original walls and what the arches themselves actually looked like. And once you entered into Walter Knott's El Camino Real, once you passed through the arches and into the tunnel under the stagecoach route, what exciting attraction would you find? A new roller coaster? Maybe a kiddie ride? Nope. What you found was models. Models? Like supermodels? Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Nope. Instead of supermodels under here, or even a ride like a conquistador coaster. Boy, that sounds cool. What you found started Starting in this very tunnel and all along the walkway, Walt designated as El Camino Real. We're little miniature missions. See, when the Spanish settled California, they established a whole series of missions. The pro-Spanish version of the story is that these missions were churches to convert the Native Americans. Footholds for the Spanish Empire in California. The pro-Native American people would tell you that these were basically centers for forced labor and to spread disease to the natives and it didn't work out so well for the natives. Some of the Spanish, like Junipero Serra, who's now I think a saint, had good intentions. They wanted to spread the gospel and teach the natives about culture and bring them into the modern world. Some of them basically just wanted money and free labor and yeah. At any rate, there were 21 Spanish missions in California going all the way from the bottom, all the way up past modern day San Francisco. And Walter Knott's El Camino Real that stretched all the way from those arches all the way to another set of arches out on La Palma, which is the main street way on the far side of the theme park, had miniature models of all 21 of them. Eventually, at the end of Walter Knott's El Camino Real, he built the Fiesta Village which is the old Spanish California or Mexican themed area of Knott's Berry Farm. And if you come back here behind the Mexican hat dance ride, you can actually just get a peek way back there of the original terminus of Walter Knott's El Camino Real. Kinda hard to spot them from here, probably easier from the stagecoach, but there they are. The original arches. The end of the road. Now Fiesta Village is still here because it's got rides and games and it's a money maker for knots. But after 40 and even 50 years, one by one, the model missions fell into disrepair and were removed from Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, Katarina, today I cannot sing you a love song. I must sing a song of sadness about the loss of the model missions. Oh, no. Oh, Katarina, my corazón es mucho broken. El misiones es no more no bueno. Quiet. I'm I'm telling a story here, jeez. But in just the past week or two, under the shadow of the modern roller coasters, something from the past has re-emerged. Behold the return of the missions. Hallelujah. 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 The missions have returned to Knott's Berry Farm. I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, boring. Model missions, great, cool. But this is amazing. The original mission models were built by a guy named Leon DeVolo, I'm pretty sure. Who was actually a Hollywood set builder, I believe, and Walter Knott got a hold of him and had him create the 21 models of the California missions. This is not something that Walter Knott thought would bring millions of dollars to the berry farm. This is just an important piece of history he decided was important to tell at his berry farm. And when the original models got crusty and old and started falling apart, according to one friend of mine who worked here at the time, they were all pretty much taken out one by one and chucked 
on a garbage heap. There was basically just a pile of half broken mission models backstage. You could totally see where if you're concentrating on building new roller coasters and exciting attractions to bring in the tourists and bring in the bucks, restoring some old junky models is really not a priority for you. So one could totally understand why Knott's Berry Farm wouldn't care too much. But it turns out that they did care because think of the children. Knott's Berry Farm is visited by about a bazillion field trippers every year. And in California, in elementary school, at this age, kids usually have to build their own model missions. This is that tender age where they learn about how much history rocks. So not only has Knott's Berry Farm restored a piece of their own history and their founder's history, and California's history, and Mexico's history, and technically Spain's history, but they've also taken a step back in the right direction, proving that they still stand for something more than just roller coasters and dollars. Dude, just think about that. That is amazing. Think of all the stuff in Disneyland that Walt Disney himself put into the park that's just been thrown away in the trash or auctioned off. What other theme park is going to go through all the money and effort and time necessary to put these things back on display and build these handsome new huts to protect them? Starting in 2013, Knott's Berry Farm had their wood guy. Hey, don't worry about it. We got a wood guy. Lovingly and painstakingly restore all of the surviving original models. This fella, who by the way was named Bob Weir. Weir. Not only restored all the original models left by Leon DeVolo, but since a few of the original models have been chucked in the trash, he also got to build some missions of his own from scratch. Dude, and Mr. Weir did a great job. Pretty sure Mission San Diego is one of the ones he built by scratch. By scratch, I mean from scratch, and look at it. It looks just like the original dioramas. I read online on yesterland.com, which is a great website by the way, that even though the original models were only built to be seen from the front, and even though they're displayed that way now, Knott's Berry Farm and Mr. Weir went through the trouble and the expense and the time of creating backs to all these models too. So that after more than 60 years, these models are actually even better than ever. So this is amazing now for multiple reasons. First of all, they've essentially resurrected the El Camino Real theme to Knott's Berry Farm. The path is a little different now, but it still winds around what's left of Reflection Lake out here. So they've restored an original part of their founder's vision for his berry farm. But also Knott's Berry Farm spent a bundle of money and time and trouble putting something educational that's probably not profitable at all into modern day Knott's Berry Farm, which is amazing. All day long I've been watching kids on field trips walk past these models. Which is great, they're learning about history. But what surprises me is during this time I've also seen a lot of adults stopping by all the model missions, talking about how they remember seeing the originals here at Knott's. And also seeing some random parents and, and also seeing a bunch of grown ups telling each other like, oh I've been to that mission in real life. Oh that one's only a short drive away, we should visit it sometime. Look at right there, there's a dad explaining to his kids what the missions are. So it's not just the kids learning about history out here. But who would have thunk it? Us old people can do some learning too. And that my friends, is a very worthwhile mission. <laughs> Get it? I waited this whole time to make that joke. Worthwhile mission. <sighs> I kill me. So next time you're at Knott's Berry Farm, make sure to take a stroll down El Camino Real and spend some time with a piece of California and Knott's Berry Farm's past. Come on, guys. It's your mission. Oh, hang on. I apologize. We have to take a little break here. But don't worry. It'll be short. Just a brief intermission. <laughs> <laughs> Intermission. Yes, sir, that is pretty amazing. A ghost of the past has returned to Knott's Berry Farm. And who knows? Maybe next they'll even bring back the old archways for El Camino Real. This bell for El Camino Real makes a lot more sense to you now, doesn't it? I love seeing the past come back to life. That excites me. All right, boys and girls, the pun's over. Your mission has ended. Now it's time for me to be moving on down the tracks towards some other adventures. I'm going to head on in here and get me a shash for for the road. Make sure you check out all the links below for more information about the missions and ways you can help keep this channel going. But for the moment, you've done your duty. You can mosey on home and sleep well. Boy, that ending got a little dark. <laughs>
weirdo kid with a camera still around here? I sure hope not. That kid drives me crazy. He's always talking about things and doing stuff. Annoying. I feel the same way. Guys, I'm standing right here. 